In the 70s, Japanese car brands wanted to push through and break the market in Europe, America, and the UK. Met with resistance at first, but then they realized they had a superior product, loads of kit standard, massive reliability. The same happened with Korean car makers in the 90s and the 2000s, and look where they are now. Now we also have Chinese brands evolving at a rate of knots. And this is one of the brands that so far we've never heard of in the UK. And that's why today's walk around video is gonna be a brand new brand and a brand new car you haven't heard of that's called a cat. It's a car that's called a cat. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. So before we start talking about whether it's a retro and why it looks strangely familiar in certain places, we'll do that in a minute. First, let's talk about Aura, the brand. So Aura sits as a sub-brand underneath GWM, Great Wall Motors. In the UK, you can buy a pickup truck called the Steed, and that's about the only Great Wall brand that we know of. In 2018, the Aura sub-brand was born in China. Now it's time for that car to come into the UK and to Europe as well. 2022, this will go on sale. Orders open for this car in December. What's really interesting, I was reading this earlier, that Great Wall Motors are investing 13 and a half billion pounds in the next five years in what they call new energy vehicles. So that means hydrogen as well as plug-in stuff. And the other thing to mention is the Aura brand is electric only from the word go. So in China, you can buy three types of Aura model right now. You can buy the Good Cat, which is going to be branded Cat here, so it's this car. You can buy the R1 Black Cat, which is like a tiny cartoon-eyed K car, which is very funky and actually sells really well. And then you can buy the R2 White Cat, which kind of looks like a mashup of a Nissan Cube, uh, Toyota Scion box, boxy thing. I don't think we're getting those two cars. Uh, it's not confirmed at least. So we're gonna be focusing on the cat, the artist formerly known as the good cat. Great Wall Motors um, unveiled this at the Munich Motor Show um, a few months back. And they also unveiled another brand that's gonna be called the Way, W-E-Y, which is an SUV uh, car aimed at a much higher end, more luxury brand, a BMW rival, if you will. This is a lower, um, more value brand than that. This car is going to be going on sale, they say, for £25,000, excluding any government grants. And like I said, all Aura vehicles are always going to be fully electric. If you're watching this and you think, oh, it's, just, it's just Chinese, I'm not interested, well, consider this. Let's not forget that, that Geely, Geely, own Volvo, Polestar, and they also own um, L London Electric Vehicle Company. Chinese company, bankrolling all of that, developing all of that. Uh, let's not forget Neo and Xpeng, these new brands, very, very fast accelerating, quite luxurious brands that are coming into the European market imminently. The rate of acceleration and evolution from Chinese brands is massive, and lots of German and other premium brands use Chinese drivetrain, running gear, infotainment. They just don't tell you about it. So Ed, this is, this is unusual because you don't often see a brand that's completely new, logo unseen, name unheard of, trying to break into new territory. It's actually quite a hard thing to do, I suspect. It's uh, very exciting. It's, uh, it's been a long while since there's a, a new brand entering the medium price point space of the car market. Um, so we have the Aura Cat, which will be up against many B hatch and BSUV vehicles. You're sort of calling it a B-segment car then? B-segment, be it B-hatch or BSUV. Okay. So somewhere in the middle. So I'm just having a look at the, um, the brochure, which is hot, hot off the press. Let's talk about the design. It's, it's a strange one because it's weirdly familiar in many different places. And just like I would say in the 70s when um, Japanese sports cars like the Celica emulated iconic cars like the Mustang, I think this is what's going on with your, and I think it's fascinating. Headlights, there's more than a touch of Mini One going on here, isn't there? Uh, but the first gen Mini One, when it wasn't so crazy and bloated. 
These have incorporated this, this running light, which I've just put on for you, the DRL, but also this is the indicator and the edge of this will go amber. The bonnet, now it's a very kind of like stubby bonnet and it's got these ridges in it. And I think, where have I seen those ridges before? I'm pretty sure I've seen those on a Porsche Cayman. I might be wrong, but there's a bit of Cayman going on there with these two, these two strong ribs. The badge, so the logo of a car company that we've never heard of, it's always, it's always ambitious for a brand to come out of nowhere and try and conquer a market. And that's the job that Aura, I guess, has got in places like the UK, where we're very badge driven. There's a lot of badge snobbery around. Here at the side, this is kind of weird. There's sort of like faded hexagons as just a piece of design. There's, they're not indicators. I thought they were, but they're not. All that's going on here. It's just a piece of design. Now, before I get too deep in the, uh, the design, you're probably thinking, how big is this car, Johnny? Because some cars like the Ionic 5 Hyundai, when you look at it on video, and I did do a video for that car, it doesn't look that big, but in actual fact, it's massive. Okay, this car, dimensionally, is 4,235 mil long, 1,825 mil wide, and 1,596 millimeters tall, okay? And it's 1,510 kilos in curb weight. I've got some specs for its competitors, but really, just, let's just talk dimensionally. Dimensionally, okay, the MG ZS, which I think is probably a rival, is 79 mil longer, 24 mil higher, eight kilos lighter. The Nissan Leaf, which when we go to the back, you'll go, oh, this reminds me a bit of a first gen Nissan Leaf. Yeah, it does, but actually better. The Leaf is uh, 255 mil longer, significantly longer, 66 mil lower in height and 70 kilos heavier. And then you've got um, the Zoe, the Renault Zoe, which I actually drove here today in, 148 mil shorter, 30 mil lower height, eight kilos lighter in weight. Anyway, enough of that. Come round to the side, because the side profile is interesting here. Now it's quite a curvaceous thing. Is it retro? Is it modern? Is it a bit of everything? I think it's probably, the cat is a bit of everything. We've actually got two cats here. We'll come on to the GT in a minute because that's a trim level that's going to be available. Apparently there's going to be four trim levels available, one of which is the GT, but those uh, specifics um, of the, the, the levels are not defined as yet. But what we do know is this car is going to be for sale from 25,000 pounds without the UK grant, which actually makes it pretty competitive, especially given that like extra value brands like MG, who make very, very, very bargainous EVs, that starts at 26 grand after the grant, the MG ZS. Yeah, and a Zoe from 27 and a half thousand pounds. So I mean, competitive. Side profile, wheels, not massively keen on the wheels there. Remind me of an early 2000s Megane Coupe. Do you know what I mean? A bit soft line but there's gonna be a, a number of different wheel choices, I am told. In the side here, you've got the charging port here. You're probably going, hang on a minute, that doesn't look familiar. This is a pre-production car. Cars coming to the UK, right-hand drive, UK spec, European spec cars will have CCS rapid charging. So on here, we've got this kind of curvy, goes up over the top of the, um, the front wing, then it dips down along the door, and then it goes up, here, and then it's got quite a bulbous back end. Again, because it's a new brand that you've never heard the name of, it does look weird with the name on it, but look at the, look how minimal it is. The, the chrome badge is big, confident, and you can't really see where the lights are. These lights down here, uh, apparently this is reversing lights, and I think there are indicators down here, and there's this mad full width um, stop brake light, which is mounted behind the glass. It's built into the tinted part of the rear window. It is a bit bulbous. It is a bit Mark I Nissan Leaf, but it is slightly better looking, I think, than the Nissan Leaf. It seems to work better with the rest of the retro going on there, the sort of elements of Mini One and the bit, bits of this and a bit of that. But also, I think if I lock it, isn't it? Oh, did somebody say Michael Knight? I think they did. I'm gonna do it again, just because I'm not bored of it yet. 
Don't touch Turbo Boost, Michael. There's a ton of competitors that the, the Aura Cat has got to compete with for people like you, you know, to get the customer's eyes onto it and to even consider a brand that has no presence in the UK. MG exists in the UK, Chinese owned, Chinese run. Uh, they literally bought the name and they've carried it on. From your perspective as, as someone representing the brand and kind of try, trying to push it in, into a new territory, yeah. what is your sort of arch rival vehicles or your, your benchmark vehicles that this would be considered against? I mean, I've kind of made a few notes myself, but... Yeah. Key competitors would be the likes of the uh, Corsa, the uh, E-Corsa, the E208 from Peugeot, it would be the Hyundai Kona Electric, it would be the VW ID3, the MG ZS. So quite a wide spanning range of uh, competitors. Boot space. Okay, tiny little parcel shelf, a bit like a Fiat 500 actually, but the boot space is bigger than the Fiat 500. Now what I would say, and I was having a, a goosey at the boot space, the boot space of the Cat is 228 litres. So that makes it smaller than the Corsa E, it makes it smaller than the Zoe, the Citroen C4, the Leaf by a long way. So it isn't a market leader in boot space, but, but I actually thought it was bigger than, I actually thought it was bigger than 228 litres because it's a half decent shape. There's an area underneath here, there's cables here, but there's an area under there for some of the, the charge cabling gubbins. And there's also, you can drop the seats from up here with a loop handle like that. So I guess a one-handed operation is what you would call this. 60-40 split. So way more useful than smaller cars like the Honda E and the 500E and that genre, but smaller than the coarser sized vehicles. Right, the big question with EVs obviously is range and charging abilities. So let's talk about those. It will have CCS as standard, and all Aura Cats sold will be able to DC rapid charge up to 80 kilowatts, which I think uh, 40 minutes, 10 to 80 percent for the small battery, and 50 minutes, 10 to 80 percent. Now that gives you a clue. There are two battery options for the Aura Cat, just like the Fit 500e and a couple of other electric cars. The 48 kilowatt hour is the entry level car, and then there's a 63 kilowatt hour. Um, top of the range battery, bigger battery. But the Finnish cars will also have two things. On board, three phase, 11 kilowatt AC charging as standard, and also 6.6 .6 single phase AC charging as standard. So great combination of charging abilities. No faffing, you can't upgrade. They're all like that. Range WLTP in miles, 209 miles, which is 336 kilometers, or the big one, 261 miles, 421 kilometers. Big batteries, impressive ranges as standard, really good. Let's talk about the motor itself. All cats, <laughs> all cats are front wheel drive, front motor, okay? And they're all the same power output, I believe. 126 kilowatts, which is 171 PS. That will deliver 250 Newton meters of torque. That will deliver zero to 62 in eight and a half seconds. And I believe it does zero to 30 miles an hour, which is 50 kilometers an hour in 3.8. Top speed restricted to 100. I'm cool with 100, that's fine. Now, people that won't have heard of Aura, but they might have heard of, of Great Wall Motors. The, do you know if the, uh, the, the, the batteries in this and the, the motors, are they made by the Great Wall Group themselves? Um, designed and developed by Great Wall Motors. And one of the, the most interesting things about this vehicle is that it is BEV only. So it's a purpose-built BEV. Yeah. Um, so for, and the Great Wall Motor company itself is one of the oldest Chinese vehicle manufacturers having started in 1984. So it has quite a long background and uh, long ranging level of experience. So it's, it's very, very good indeed. Let's talk about the car. The cabin of the cat, I think is really quite exceptional. I think the whole car is better in the metal than it is in pictures. Um, it's a bigger car than I was expecting. Love some of the, f the furnishings, the textiles, but there's no doubt there's been inspiration from the Fiat 500 and, and Minis 1 slash Cooper. You can see these switches here, the toggles with the little dividers in between here, very, very mini. You can see the sort of lines on here and the kind of two-tone Italian stitching on it, very, very 
Fiat 500. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I can see why they're doing that. According to the stats, predominantly going to be a female orientated car. So these two tones and, and nice textiles is going to be high on the list. This is tasteful, considering so many manufacturers have the stuck on kind of tablet, which I think is a bit awkward. This nestles into the dash quite neatly on the cap. These are two screens. The right hand one is 10.25 inches and the one on the left is the same size and it's all touch. This is all uh, a vent. So one wide divided air vent, which is tasteful. As the videographer Nick said, wow, the dash looks like it's made of Alcantara. From three feet away, it absolutely does. When you touch it, not quite so much, but I have to say, the feeling of the, the plastics, the feeling of the textiles is actually higher spec than I was expecting. Bearing in mind what this car is going up against for the price, I think it's very impressive on first, on first impressions. We've got a center console here with a rotary dial for the drive, which is very sort of Jaguar, uh, Range Rover, and the other manufacturers like, uh, in fact, Kia are, are doing it. Then you've got a pair of cup holders down here with optional, I think, wireless phone charging just there. Pair of USBs. I, I like it. I think it's, I think it's funky. I think it carries it off very well. Now, what, what the other thing I'd say is, there's a lot of kit on on, on the cat. Snapdragon 8155 uh, chipset for intelligent cockpit, Intel Mobile Eye for intelligent driving, 360 degree camera. Because I was looking at it earlier. So you've got things like Park Assist. You've also got massage seats, heated, um, optional cooled seats, but massage seats. On a car of this segment, massage seats are unheard of. Seat setting, here we go. Driver's seat massage on. Oh my gosh, that was instant. Okay, while I'm having my coccyx pummeled, uh, let's have a look at the immediate dash binnacle display here. There's a silver surround actually, I thought it was illuminated but it's silver. This is all kind of brushed faux aluminium um, finish here. I really like the layout. On the left hand side you've got like a, what looks like a, a wheel and that is your battery status, full to empty. On the right you've got the same thing but for power, the amount, I guess the throttle position and whether you're getting any, any regen back. Nicely two-spoke steering wheel, which I do like, very similar to the Honda e in fact. I very, very much like. I like a two-spoke. I'm not sure why. I just, I just kind of like them. Diamond stitching on the middle portion of the doors, and then the top half is, is body coloured. Most of the interiors are going to be available as two-tone. I think the entry-level car will be just jet black. I fear that jet black might make it a bit boring. It won't bring out some of this creativity. They've only just released some of the details to me this morning. So yeah, there's a 360-degree camera. 12 ultrasonic radars, a single front mounted high perception camera to navigate every driving situation. Um, we've got, uh, it's a steel body, uh, body shell, uh, smidge over one, one and a half tons in weight, which is good considering the battery size. Um, it's got the latest ESP systems, automatic e-call, crash and breakdown assistance. This car has a five year warranty on the vehicle and eight year warranty on the drivetrain. Pretty good. You've thrown a lot at this, haven't you? I mean, like if you just talk about it in terms of tech, as standard, what are the main kind of things you will expect to get? So we'll have four grades um, and the standard equipment from entry is like nothing else that's out there on the market currently. Uh, so from entry, um, we'll see the likes of wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It's a fully electric car, as we discussed, so it'll come standard from the entry grade with three phase AC charging. And that will be particularly useful, uh, particularly once workplace charging becomes the norm with electric vehicles in the not so distant future. Yep. Um, 18 inch alloy wheels would be standard across the range, regardless of which grade you get. Oh, okay. So a level of equipment that's usually associated with the segment above uh, at a kind of a mid grade offering, yep. available on a from entry level vehicle that's pitched somewhere in the B segment, be it B hatch or B SUV. Okay, as per usual on the late break show, I've sat in the front seat in the driver's seat, set it how I have it. I'm six foot three um, and I'm sitting behind myself. I've got lots of leg room. The floor is a little high because you've got the battery pack set underneath the floor, which you can actually see when you crawl under it. It's near as damn it, flat floor car, maybe an inch ridge in the middle. 
um, three seats across here, armrest, loads of headroom actually. It's got a nice cutout for the headroom. Remember, this is not a crossover design. This is not a pretend SUV. This is just a hatchback. But you know, I like that. I'm cool with that. The thing I feel back here, aside from the fact um, it's spacious, is it looks and it feels more expensive than what it really is, especially compared to things like entry-level VW ID3s, which I think feel entry-level and a bit scratchy, especially for a Volkswagen, you know, for a German brand. I'm looking at this dash and I'm looking at the two-tone seats and, the, and I'm actually thinking this is, this is really quite a nice place to be. There is one USB at the back, so you'll have to fight over it. Isofix, of course, and the door aperture. I know it's a dull thing to say, but having experienced the Peugeot E208, which is a fantastic car, but with a very triangular entry, this is actually much, much better. Yeah, much better. This is cool. What I want to see, and I have, I've not seen any other cat apart from this one. Um, I want to see it in a different color. You can get it in quite a leery gold, and I'm wondering whether that'd be too much or whether it might work. And you can get it in a metallic brown, which I think with some retro style wheels could work really nicely. Let's have a quick look at the GT trim level, which they've got there. So the GT car doesn't have any performance gains, any difference in high voltage, the same two battery pack sizes, um, same output, same zero to 60, all of that as the normal cat. The GT does have the sort of faux carbon fiber kind of race car arches, sill, skirts, these um, alloy wheels, 18, so same diameter, just a different look with the red insert especially from this corner. There's definitely a John Cooper Works mini thing going on. You've already got the mini one kind of inspired eyes. This is definitely reminiscent of the John Cooper Works mini, I reckon. It's not gonna to appeal to everyone. If I'm being honest, for me, I think that the look of the cat lends itself better to a sort of happy, cartoony, retro look, which, but I haven't gone in here yet. Look at it in here. So. GT car gets black with red, red accents throughout. Sports embroidered headrests. And I guess it's just a little bit more kind of like race look without the race insurance or performance credentials. So like I say, the wheels are different, suspension's the same. Probably your biggest styling cue is this, this sort of WRC style spoiler, which is different. Uh, obviously you've got the badge here, but you've got these inserts. Here, the sort of um, air scoops, which the normal cat does not get. Will it go like a scolded cat? No, because it's exactly the same performance as the other one. What's interesting about the, this particular car, and again, this is pre-prod, the same as this one, is there's no Aura badge, there's no chrome. They've de-chromed it, so there's actually nothing on the boot lid at all. So it's, it's got quite a big arse, a little bit like the, um, the Megane that era of, of the shaking that ass McGann, which I actually think is my favorite McGann shape. But anyway, I digress. I like the uncluttered look. I like that, that rear window mounted, huge bank of LEDs. Rear diffuser, looks like you've sort of got bleeding gums or you're a shark that's just eaten a seal and it's all a bit bloody and I'm not sure. What do you think? Put a comment below. This is the top spec. This is going to be the flagship car, would you say? Yeah, so uh, the GT um, as we see it today, so in, in the GT guys will be available in mid or in high grade um, guys. So basically you take the mid grade offering and add these GT elements, or you take the high, high spec or the top of the range model and add these GT, uh, GT styling elements to it. I hope you found this episode as interesting as me. I'm fascinated when I see a new brand emerging out of seemingly nowhere and progressing at a rate of knots. How's the cat gonna drive? Is it gonna go like a scolded cat? I don't know. I haven't driven it yet. Nobody's really driven it yet. As soon as I can, I surely will. What do you think about the Aura Cat? Do you value badge snobbery over what you see, what warranty you get? I'd like to know what you think in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching one of these fresh new car reviews on The Late Break Show. These are supported by Continental Tires. Cheers.